The last YouTuber I'm going to survey for this round is Leo Gurra for Actualize.org. A kind of self-help or coaching guy, but who dabbles in more spiritually advanced subjects. He refers to it as advanced personal development and how to create a profound life. So how well does this guy, his teaching, worldview and advice compare with timeless parameters? For those who have experiences with human types, we can tell that Leo Gura is an urbanum type. The type that tends to value social mastery and be liked by others over higher ideals or freedom to be natural. This is a type that tends to adapt to external values and be overly careful for the sake of looking good, but with a great talent for speaking well and being entertaining. We can also guess based on the subject matter he dwells into, as well as the fact that he claims to get excited by the idea of being world class, of being great at what he does, of living an extraordinary successful life, that he has fiducium and meritum as secondary components. But as real spiritual masters know, being world class and successful, in almost every sense, tends to be incomparable with spiritual principles, such as those of non-attachment, which is genuine self-mastery. So in order to survey this guy, I have watched his basic video on the big picture of self-actualization, and this time I will write down the 12 basic principles of timeless parameters, or true self-mastery, and simply check them off whenever he gets them right. And you need to start to learn to discriminate reality from appearance. Let's see. If you don't understand epistemology, you're going to have a really tough time just sorting through the wheat and the chaff of all the material and all the information that's out there. Because there's a lot of information out there these days. A lot of conspiracy theories and various religions and cults and, and this and that. How do you know what's true and what's worthwhile to pursue and what's not? He says you first need an epistemology, which is a better start than any of the other YouTubers I've surveyed in this round. If you want to boil everything down to this, it's basically the quality of your consciousness. Because what is the absolute? The absolute is consciousness. He says the ultimate real, or absolute, is consciousness, which is on the right track. It's the one thing amidst all the vastness of all the appearances. So you're discriminating reality from appearances and ultimately you discriminate everything down to just one thing. And that one thing is consciousness. That's it. That's the only one thing that's reliable. Everything else is appearance. Another component here is unconditional love. The ability or the capacity to have unconditional love in all situations with all people. This is actually a very good litmus test of your growth. So as you're growing, if you're developing more and more capacity to be unconditionally loving, especially with people and situations that go against your agenda, that go against your ego, that go against all your um, selfish drives and motives, this is a real test of how much you've grown and how much you've self-actualized. This unconditional love not only applies to other people and situations, but also, of course, applies to yourself. So a big component of self-actualization is self-acceptance. He recognizes the value and metric of love as an expression of enlightenment, which means we can check that one off. Another component is detachment. That means you're not attached to the fruits of your actions. No attachment. There we go. The next component is honesty. Honesty is huge when you're trying to pursue truth and sort out reality from appearance. Honesty not just with other people, but with yourself especially. Based on what he says about honesty and self-inquiry, I think it's safe to assume that he recognizes the importance of self-knowledge. Let's check that one off as well. Another component is becoming a creator. Which means, for me, what that means is life purpose. Finding your life purpose, getting clear about what you actually want to contribute to this world, what impact you want to have, specifically with your career. Here we have a potential issue, since the idea of becoming a creator clashes with the deeper truths about creational causality and the development of humility. 
What he speaks of here in terms of having an impact and such can easily feed into vanity. However, let's not judge him too quickly. Let's keep going. Another component of this uh, work is reconciling evil, suffering, and ignorance. This is an important component for unconditional love. Um, it's easy to be hating other people, calling them evil and ignorant and so forth, when you haven't really d looked deeply within yourself to see the evil, suffering, and ignorance that is residing within you. Again, this ties into the value of love, which I already gave him points for. But here he confirms the correct stance on non-dualism and its relation to developing true love. Another important component here, speaking of holistic understanding, is pursuing big picture understanding. So part of this process of discriminating reality from appearance is that you're going to need to go for the big picture. Everything is non-dual, everything is one. And again, some of what he says here ties into the other stuff. Everything is connected, so if you truly understand one point of timeless parameters well enough, you should understand all of them. But just because someone says things that are true, does not mean they themselves fundamentally believe it, or understands it properly. It is easy to just repeat things you've heard or read about, without digesting it. So far Leo is doing pretty good, but we still need to keep an eye out for potential errors. After all, the bigger the audience you have and the bigger your claim to enlightenment, the more responsibility you have. Now, Leo goes on with stuff that are fairly accurate from an enlightened perspective, but until he actually hits the target with all of the 12 points I've lined up, I simply cannot be satisfied. Another important component here is um, undoing social conditioning. There's a lot of stuff that your culture has filled your mind with, various ideas, beliefs, various paradigms, um, various morals and standards uh, and rules that need to be questioned and done away with. So he eventually scores another point. He understands the importance of questioning cultural assumptions. This is also important in order to inspire a better and more healthy world. And the basis for questioning cultural assumptions should primarily come from your own true nature, not simply another ideology. Cultural beliefs will always question other cultural beliefs, but that does not make them any less a form of hypnosis or indoctrination. However, let's give him the benefit of the doubt here. Yet even with that, we still have many points we have not confirmed. And I remember watching one of his videos over a year ago, where I noticed a pretty serious flaw in his teaching, but it was one that I cannot remember at the moment, so I looked at two more videos. One of them was on the subject of free will, and in it he recognizes that we don't really have free will, that we don't have control even of our own thoughts. He says there is no self who can have control or free will, and that it took time for him to arrive at this conclusion, but arrived at it through self-observation. And thus we can also give him points for creational causality, or so I thought. But I had to completely re-evaluate Leo when I watched this video on the authentic self, because this is where his entire teaching falls apart. Not only does it not give him any more points, but it also puts into question what we already gave him credit for. In other words, he massively contradicts himself on all points, simply by getting one fundamental concept wrong. Yes, that's how fragile enlightenment and wisdom is. If you don't get all of it right, you don't really get anything right, because everything is connected. The authentic self has two fundamental components to it. Primarily it's the inner witness or pure awareness, and second to that is the natural energies in your body. In other words, being authentic is to boot let go of attachments and identifications, as well as letting go of your inhibitions. This is connected to all the timeless principles. But what does Leo teach about the authentic self? While he is aware of the timeless concepts of no self and that everything is always changing, he also claims that the authentic you lies in the future, who you will become after full realization happens. This seems to me like a profound misunderstanding, 
since becoming who you are is all about conquering time. To realize that you already have the authentic you inside you and it was always there. Basically you realize there was nothing for you to search for because who you are can only be found inside. And the deepest part is the concept of no self or void which is everyone's inner observer that cannot be defined. What stands between false self and authentic self isn't time or effort but awareness. To the extent that achieving full awareness takes time, you could make the argument that your true self lies in the future, but putting it that way is deceptive at best. And one aspect of the metrics of enlightenment is that you transmit understanding in a competent manner. But this isn't a case of incompetence in the choice of words. This is a case of error, because Leo goes on to specify that the future authentic self is both an ideal that can never be fully achieved and at the same time something that resembles a kind of superhuman. It's who you will become after full self-actualization happens, which is an ideal. You're never going to be fully self-actualized. You're always going to be working towards that ideal. You're a limitless thing. Literally, your potential in life is so amazing, so vast, you could take your life in any direction you want right now literally any direction you want. You don't even imagine all the directions that you could take it in because it would, it would overwhelm your brain, probably give you a headache. And while this can be thought of as an amusing and naive expectation of enlightenment that belongs to the spiritually immature, the worst part of it is the way Leo denigrates the natural and refers to it as shit. So this idea of, of being natural, watch out for that. What's natural is usually shit. And I don't know about you, but I don't want a shit life. I don't want a natural life. I want the best possible life, the self-actualized life. And for that, you have to have this expectation that you're going to be working really hard, growing yourself. He doesn't believe in self-acceptance without working hard. And he doesn't think the most basic things in life are the most fulfilling. No, Leo needs an extraordinary life. And of course this means that he can never be satisfied. And also that he can never help other people find true fulfillment. He has played a trick on himself. And his worldview legitimizes manipulation and exploitation. If you are not super amazing, then it's your own fault. Because you are too lazy to become your authentic self. He also says elsewhere that you are all of reality. This is another common misunderstanding that can be found also in the New Age movement. No, reality is God. We are just a part of it. But a reflection of the causeless cause exists within us. This is what is meant by God's image. The idea that we are all of reality probably comes from the idea of unity, that all is one. But the real meaning of this unity or oneness is analogy and interconnection. Not that everything is literally everything else. That right now you are also a car in a Japanese factory. No. So he does not score any more points in the measurements. Obviously he is not satisfied with mere process, but needs to achieve and be the doer. He does not respect unhealthy expressions, but wants to inspire people to become something they are not. There is no indication he values the painful aspects of reality as much as the positive. He clearly expresses that he has no reverence at all for the mundane and ordinary. Same with the natural. And certainly he does not transmit proper, timeless wisdom. But he also loses the score he already appeared to have, before we had more information. To be able to create an amazing life and be limitless in your potential means you basically think you can become a god which is not humility and does not give proper credit to creational causality, to karma or to the creator. And obviously, if you are partial towards the extraordinary and denigrates the ordinary as mediocrity or shit, you are not truly loving or have transcended non-dualism. It also means you are still likely to be stuck in cultural hypnosis, because true questioning must be based on naturalness and suffering, not vain ambitions or personal desires. And attempting to create your own program will interfere with achieving true self-knowledge. 
Your true purpose can only be found in self-discovery born from knowing who you are. But if your authentic self only lies in the future, or can never be fully achieved, then how can you even know who you are? And if you don't know who you are, or have to work hard to become who you are, then you can't know your true purpose until you've achieved that goal. Otherwise your purpose will be constructed on assumptions of who you are, and that is of little help. Finally, I don't think I need to tell you how attachment to the extraordinary flies in the face of non-attachment and the nourishment that comes from open receptivity. Despite this, I think it is fair to regard Leo as belonging to consciousness level 2. He is dabbling in very high quality spiritual stuff, and he only needs to fix his view on a few minor things and everything would fit together. And who knows, if he keeps at it he might get there. But he faces a big obstacle in that he has already begun to teach before he was ready or mature enough. Someone who is too focused on teaching or playing the guru have less time for learning. I think his mistake has been mixing spiritual knowledge with materialistic self-help advice to become successful in business and selling his product. He has read a lot of things, but not turned it into his own knowledge. You accept yourself more and more and more and more and more. You care about what other people think of you less and less and less and less until you feel complete without needing to do or be anything at all. And then also this feeds into the self-acceptance because when you're just being, you feel complete. You don't need to do anything to accept yourself. Whereas when you're doing and having, that becomes a never-ending cycle of you doing stuff in order to feel valuable, to feel worthy, to feel significant, to feel lovable, to feel complete. And that never ends because the only way to end that cycle is to end it with being. I don't want a natural life. I want the best possible life. He possesses more information than understanding. He never could overcome his feelings of deficiency and surrender his ego. And so he's still searching for fulfillment in the future and in the substitute of being impressive instead of just being. After all, to want to be spiritually impressive is no less a desire to be impressive. Leo also fails to see things holistically when he encourages this type of self-actualization without pointing out possible costs to the environment. People need to slow down and do less, and be content with less, not crave more, or we are all doomed.